Are you a makeup artist or hairstylist who works for yourself? Are you a freelancer, a sole proprietor or sole trader? Do you have any idea how much your business is costing you? Now you may know about the cost of the products that you use on each of your clients, but what about all the other expenses that go into the cost of running your business? They sure add up. In this video, you'll learn a little bit more about some of those other expenses that you're going to incur in running your business and how you can determine the cost of each person sitting in your chair. Because when you know that, you know how many people you need to have sitting in your chair to make a profit. Hey there, I'm Sue Louise McLaurin. I've been a freelance makeup artist for 20 years now and I'm passionate about helping the next generation of makeup artists become more successful freelancers. So when you became a makeup artist, I'm sure it wasn't so that you could be doing Excel spreadsheets, balancing your books and worrying about how much tax you were going to have to pay. That's really not that much fun, right? You became a makeup artist because you want to be creative, you want to look after your clients, and you love that side of the business. The reality is, however, that you need to be taking care of your business. You need to take care of the business finances. It's no good just having all this money coming in and spending it, throwing all the receipts for your expenses into a shoebox and worrying about it at the end of the financial year. That sort of thing is actually going to be costing you money. And I'm not just talking about the money that it will cost you to give to a bookkeeper or your tax accountant to take care of that shoebox full of receipts. Now, while I find that most artists have a fairly good idea of the amount of money that's coming in, especially if you're using a program such as Square to do your invoicing, which prints out all sorts of pretty reports for you, a lot of artists don't really have a very good idea about their expenses and how much their business is actually costing them. And even less idea of what it's costing to have each individual client sitting in their chair. Or if you work in commercial makeup, how much it's costing you for each day that you work. And here's the thing, what you earn isn't as important as what you get to keep. That portion that you get to keep is known as your profit in business. So your income minus your expenses equals your profit. Let's use an example. Mary Smith makeup artist charges $100 per person to do makeup. And over the period of a month, she does 10 makeups. Therefore, she earns $1,000. However, she also has business expenses of, let's say, $200, which means, of course, that her profit comes out at $800. Now, the good news is you actually only pay tax on your profit. So it stands to reason that you want to be really good with recording and declaring all of your eligible expenses so that you're minimizing the amount of tax that you pay, legally, of course. Now, when it comes to expenses, some of them are really obvious. Obviously, the cost of your makeup products. Now, if you're just starting out or in the first couple of years of your business, you know that setting up your kit can be a very large expense. But even if you've been in business for decades, you're still going to need to keep replenishing a lot of the products in your kit. Things like mascara, which you want to be replacing every couple of months, foundation, skincare, other products that you go through very, very quickly. Now, I've been around for a long time, but it has taken me many, many years to get over that temptation to go out and buy all the new latest and greatest products. I try and limit myself to just buying a few new things to try out each year. Otherwise, my kit would just be completely out of control. But what about some of the not so obvious expenses? Let's run through some of those. Firstly, there's the rent on your premises. If you have a salon or a studio, that's fairly self-explanatory, but if you see clients at home or even if you have a home office, you may be able to claim a portion of your rent as a business expense too. And then there's obviously things like parking and tolls if you're a mobile makeup artist and you need to travel to see your clients. There's also things like your telephone and internet. You may need to just claim a portion of those bills if, you're, uh, if you also use your phone and your home internet for personal reasons. There's things like your business insurance, any subscriptions that you might have. So anything that you pay a monthly subscription for, such as a calendar service or Bridal Beauty Pro app. 
Then there's things like bank charges. So if you are using a service such as Square, that 2% or 2.2% or whatever it is that the Square charges you, you can claim that back as a business expense as well. Your web hosting, any marketing or advertising costs. So obviously, if you're getting business cards printed, if you're putting an ad in a magazine, if you're doing a bridal expo, even if you're doing Facebook ads or boosting or sponsoring a post on Instagram, those are all business expenses that you can claim as well. And then there's a couple that you may not have thought of. For instance, here in Australia at least, you can claim $150 for laundry. Now obviously we do have laundry and I'm not just talking about wearing a uniform but think about when you're washing your brushes. I don't want to even think about how much water I go through washing my brushes after each job. And of course, thanks to COVID, we've had all those extra expenses with PPE. So things like masks and face shields, gloves, hand sanitizer. Because we're using those things for our work, we can definitely be claiming them as a business expense as well. Now, obviously, I'm not an accountant, so I'm not qualified to give you specific financial advice. And all of this advice is just general. And it may vary depending on whereabouts in the world you live. So, of course, I do recommend that you speak to your accountant to get advice specific to your business and your situation. But as I said, this is just general and a good guideline for some of the expenses that you perhaps may not have thought about. You want to make sure that you're recording those expenses somewhere. So either have some sort of a accounting software that you're recording them in or even just using an Excel spreadsheet so that at the end of the tax year, you're not just coming up with a, a shoebox full of receipts and taking that along to your accountant. So what do you do with all this information once you have it? Well, I've created a resource for you. It's a completely free resource and it's a worksheet where you can enter in your rates and the total of all of your expenses. And the worksheet will tell you how many people you need to have sitting in your chair or how many days of commercial work you need to be doing in order to make a profit each month. So this also helps you know when it's time to put your prices up. If you see that you're not actually being that profitable at your current rates, you can bump them up and you can play around with the figures in the worksheet too to be able to determine what sort of profit you'll be making and how many people you need to have in the chair at different rates. So as I said, it's a free resource and you can download that at sulouise.com forward slash rates. And there will be a clickable link down in the description below this video. If you can think of any other expenses that I haven't mentioned, please pop them down in the comments box below as well. And that will help out other artists who are watching this video. Thanks again for watching. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up to subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell so that you will be notified next time a video is uploaded. Bye for now.